quite a team coming from all over the world, really. Uh, we have guys from uh, Slovakia, Czech Republic, United Kingdom, South Africa, United States, Seychelles, Bangladesh. So quite a wide range and you'd be amazed how quickly they all can mold together as a team and work well together. Uh, yeah, and so life out here is it's interesting, man. You uh, can't get further away in the world than here. Uh, if you poke a hole through the planet, that's where California is from the Seychelles. So uh, you just have to adapt to the ways, the food, the, the culture, and um, yeah, you miss family at times for sure, uh, but you just remember where you are too. You're, you're in the most beautiful epic fishery in the world. And so to be able to go out every day, your, your morning uh, commute is on a boat, you know, for 30 minutes, no traffic, show up to a flat full of fish. Uh, it's good living, man. Uh, it's hard work though. You are on for nine months and I believe that's probably the longest season out of anywhere in the world. Uh, so yeah, you. this is your life, this is where you live. It's not just like a, a quick little trip. Uh, so you've got to survive a long season and that means taking care of yourself. Kyle. Sean. From Dave. Tommy. Serge. Wiz. Alex. Quanchiagua. Cameron Musgrave. reminded of home by the guests they talk about oh did you hear about this or oh Christmas is coming up or so yeah you, it's it can be tough on your you know mental side of things uh, but you're usually just so busy uh, thinking about the fishing uh, that day or the following uh, that you keep your mind towards that and you, you do quite all right This is uh, 
uh, one of Alex Fly's Monkfish Cream or, or a Milky Magic, his version of it. We're going to go see if we can uh, prick ourselves a monkfish today. So, so what is it imitating? What? Uh, a little bit of algae, which the, those fish are feeding on, a little bit of flash in there, they're feeding on like spirulina and that kind of stuff in the water. Um, little phytoplankton's, cocoa pops, those are kind of sort of things. And that's kind of what we're trying to imitate. Coming to this trip, I just thought milkies were extremely hard to hook, and then maybe when you've hooked one, yeah, you just play it out and you'll land the thing. Um, I quickly learnt that hooking one is a tenth of the process. Oh my god. Fish are an interesting critter. It's a very new species for fly fishermen to chase, and so uh, a lot to do with luck. I'd say 90% of that fish is luck. Uh, you will see them, you will get in front of them, but it's a it's a grazing fish. It's not a predator. So you, you're putting an offering out there, and if he is feeding in that zone, he'll take your fly. Rarely do you see a milk turn off and eat your fly. He's off, he's off, he's off, he's off. We cast, we cast, we cast. See ah. like the surface or just below on algae or plankton or something like that. And so essentially, the vegetarians, they don't really move for the fly. You've got to have it right in the spot and just give them no excuse to ignore it. And then eventually, one will eat. Um, and, but it can be frustrating. You can have a hundred fish in front of you and not a single one's eating your fly. Backwards, 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 backwards. I'm going to lose him. Go back, go back, go back, go back! Oh. Oh. No, I got him. Fish is off, fish is off, fish is off, uh, fish is off. Oh. Yeah, fish is off. Ah. <laughs> Come on! Once you finally got one hooked, they're just, you know, they've just got a massive tail on them, big fork tail, they're just torpedo shaped body, just yeah, just a bundle of muscle, and the initial runs are very strong. They'll, they'll go a couple hundred meters um, several times, jumping their way out, and uh, yeah, like you can't pull too hard because their mouth is a bit soft. So it's a bit of a um, yeah, a bit of a drawn out game of trying to get one of these things. Go again. You're picking a fight with uh, a devil fish. This thing is going to do everything it can to break you off, spit the hook, you name it. Just to let you know, I've looked up on the outside to a milk. Um, I'm probably going to be a bit late for the mothership. So worried because I uh, lost one in this point last time. Essentially, um, they don't build up lactic acid either, so tiring one out just takes a long time. Um, their gill system just allows them just to keep taking in the oxygen, keep going strong. And oh, we got someone diving to go get the line. The fish is lost. Oh, you kidding? I gotta say, I'm pretty nervous. It's my seventh milkfish. 
That's probably the smallest one I've hooked, but I'm okay with that. And he's playing the right game so far. Man. That song spit, he hooked his tail for a second there. Yeah. Check your rig. I can't, I can't even bear it. I fucking hate milk fish. A little bit scared to even talk right now. But we, we're getting close. Number eight. Come on fish, be my boy. Oh, get off that tail. Ooh, it's a heart attack on the hook set. Got just got right back in there, did nothing different, got him. So you just gotta stick with it, they're frustrating, but that's why a lot of people love it, is it, it's such a reward to finally land a, a fish that's so new to a fly angler. And they're big, they jump. Uh, oh man, this took an eternity to land one of these things. Stoking. Come on, Milky. Mwah. in the Aldabra, former part of the Aldabra group of islands and it's quite interesting so all the atolls and islands are way different in age you know some are like 40 million years old some are 60 million years old so yeah it's it's uh, it's, it's a it's an atoll obviously with a coral atoll with a lagoon in the inside um, if uh, I recall correctly it's about 18 kilometers in length and 14 kilometers wide with uh, a lot of flats surrounding find giant land tortoises. Um, some of them still got a few feral pigs and goats on them. Uh, Southwest Island on Cosmelita have got little rabbits sort of running around. So it's probably the early mariners that put some of the animals down there, you know, to feed them as they came past again.
Yeah, my name is Jude and I'm the captain of Lundstar. Um, as you can see, she's an 85 foot custom built uh, sailing catamaran. Very, very spacious and very comfortable. We've got six, uh, six guest cabin and three crew cabin. Um, for now, we're operating in the area of Astov and Cosmolito. So, yeah, Cosmolito and the stove, those are our, you know, uh, destinations more geared towards GT fishermen or permit fishing or whatever it may be. So as a guide, uh, working up to that position is quite special. Uh, we only send our most experienced guides there um, in that they are working every single day straight through a season. So our first season, for example, this year was four weeks straight. Our second season will be 11 weeks straight. We're living on a boat, so they got to be able to uh, bring the heat, you know, it lasts a long time. Um, also, Cosmolito is about 10 times the size of St. Francois, so it's vast, uh, much bigger, tides move a lot faster, so you really have to have your head wrapped around uh, tidal movements and how GTs behave. as remote as you can go on planet Earth. It's the GT capital of the world. Um, it's a really unbelievable, fantastic site fishery. Very diverse in, uh, in the species that you can get. Fantastic bone fishing, also trigger fishing. But obviously the main species that the guys go out there for are the giant trevatic, you know, which is world class. I think if there's any fishery on the planet where you can sight cast to trevatty like you can on Cosmolita. You know, Yeah. Oh, yeah.